life with this great mysteries will one day come to an end oh, 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 oh but faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my friend. I believe that the very same Christ that was slain on the old rugged cross has the power to change lives today for it changed me completely a new life is mine that is why to the cross I will stay Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Do you believe in the hill called Mount Calvary? Amen. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Ah, it is a great honor and privilege to be here at this great central church of Columbus. I, I just thank God anytime we get an opportunity just to say a word about Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that whether you know it or not, Jesus is coming again real soon. And I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. And this week, God is going to take us on a journey. And whatever you do, you don't want to miss one night. Because God wants to take us from where we are to where he wants us to be. Because it's time to get serious. I, I say it's time to get serious. For too long we have just, just made religion and spirituality secondary and tertiary. And it's time to move on up a little higher in Christ Jesus. So I thank God for this moment that he has given us. I praise God for your pastor and for the leadership of this church. He is my friend. And I want you to know I love his vision. I love his spirit. 
He is very encouraging. And I want you to know that the very best right here in North America is right here at your church. He's a Rolls Royce of a man and a Mercedes Benz of a preacher. And I just thank God for uh, uh, this great man of God and my friend who has extended this call. And I have taken this call very seriously because I do know that people's lives are in the balance. So I thank you for taking care of all of the business and for the leadership of this church that has come together. And I want you to know that you cannot spell success without you. And so this week, it's going to be a wonderful week with Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with a person. It has all to do with the Holy Ghost. And when the Spirit of God comes down, I want you to know, lives will be changed. Can you just put your hand up right here? Just put your hand up and say, I'm ready to get serious about my Lord. Come on, say, I'm ready to get serious about my Lord. Now, if you're really ready, shout hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord. Shout, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. If you're serious, shout amen one more time. Amen, amen. Now, everything that we're going to talk about this week is going to come from the word of God. And if it's not in the word, it doesn't deserve to be heard. But if it's in the book, we're going to take a look. Because it's not going to be what Peeler said, but what Peeler read. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a poet. Y'all didn't even know it. Come on and say amen out there. Yeah, God is a good God. And he's worthy, worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful that you are here tonight. Now, God, we recognize that every time we open up the word, you are literally opening up your mouth. So speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, and allow your presence to be felt. Let your word so penetrate our lives that we just do not become excited about your word, but help us to apply your word and get serious about our relationships with you. So take us, break us if you must, but with your divine and loving hands, put us back together again. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Let the church of the living God shout out amen, amen. and praise God. Amen, amen, amen. It is always a delight just to uh, brag and introduce and reintroduce to you the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And this week theme God gave to me, let's get serious. And every single night we're literally going to, with links in a chain, move through this journey of getting serious. Because for too long, we have made casual the things of God. And I believe that God wants to speak to us because heaven or hell or being vibrant Christians in these last days is a serious goal. And we have to first of all start out getting serious about prayer. Because you and I need to recognize that prayer is going to be the key to change us from where we are presently to where God wants us to be. Now, I want you to understand, before we get into our text tonight, and the keys to a powerful and effective prayer existence, you need to understand that the enemy hates us when we pray. Y'all didn't get me here, huh? I said the enemy hates it when we pray. Now, most of us really don't understand that he really does hate us when we pray. So what, what he tries to do is to hinder us from creating for ourselves an awesome prayer experience. Because he knows that there is power in prayer. 
Now, now, some of you are acting as if you don't know that there is power in prayer. Now, if you know that prayer changes people and changes things in our lives and changes and rearranges our priorities in life, if you know it for yourself, somebody ought to shout amen. amen. Because the devil knows that things happen when we pray. See, Elijah prayed and fire came down from heaven. Samson prayed and God opened up a rock basin. Didn't you know that? See, see, Jabez prayed and God enlarged his territory. Jehoshaphat prayed and, and gave him victory over his enemies. I, Jacob prayed and God changed his name. I wish somebody would have helped me here. Daniel prayed and, 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 and he came down and shut the lion's jaws. Uh, Hannah prayed and God opened up her womb and gave her a child. Elijah prayed and a dead boy came back to life. Hezekiah prayed and God added 15 years to his life. Nehemiah prayed and God protected him from his enemies. Paul and Silas prayed and, and the jailhouse rocked and the chains fell off and sinners came running. What must I do to be praised? I want you to know that things happen when People pray. And, and, and things will start happening in your life and the church's life if we as his people begin to prioritize prayer. So I declare that it's time to get serious about prayer. If you believe that, somebody shout amen. amen. Now I, I want you to understand that, that he tries to make us so busy with our jobs and our families, the enemy does to try to keep us from developing a significant relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, did you know that the primary thing for us to, to begin to really develop a prayer existence is not just to get stuff from Jesus. See, a whole lot of us think that, that the Lord is some kind of cosmic uh, bellhop. That, that just answers us when we're deep in trouble. The primary objective for us to learn to be intimate with God in prayer is to develop a relationship with him. Because I want you to understand that it's not, it's not mature for us to always think that prayer is just to get stuff from God because our primary objective uh -huh, is, is always to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now I, 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 am, uh, I am learned to a small degree and, and whatever I have accomplished it is for God's glory, it's for his honor and it's through his power and I want you to understand that, that I really uh, am not worthy to be here right here with you because I am on this journey with you and I am developing my prayer existence and God has convicted me but, but I want you to know as I walk with the Lord every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Now, now I can get very technical. I can get very technical, sisters, a uh, 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 pastor and, 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 and first elder. I could get very technical. I could literally talk about the kinds of prayer tonight and, and kind of impress you uh, that there are, are different kinds of prayers, the ejaculatory prayer, the secret prayer, the family prayer, the group prayer, the public prayer. There are, are over 18 different types of technical prayer in the Bible. I, I can go over the parts of prayer, the adoration part and the confessional part and the supplicatory part and the intercessory part and the thanksgiving part. I can do all of that, but, but tonight we're going to get down to the nitty gritty about praying. Because I have learned that you can know all the parts of prayer and all the kinds of prayer and still have no power in your prayer life. But, but I want to just look at Jesus. And, and as I look at Jesus, I'm at one of his 
his disciples tonight, trying to learn. Because when the disciples looked at the intimacy that Jesus had with his father, that they began to get jealous and envious about that relationship Jesus had. And one day they got so excited and they said, Jesus, can you, can, can you teach us how to pray like that? Like that? Now, I, I know that there are many others, but I want you to understand that God has, uh, he's has me on a journey in my personal life. And I want you to understand uh, that I have found uh, that there are seven, somebody shout out seven, uh, <laughs> that there are seven keys, very practical keys. If you want to develop tonight a relationship with God, and if, if, if in fact you, um, uh, are serious every single night. I want you to not just come here and just come and uh, meet and greet and eat and then tweet. Come on and say amen out there. No, 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 no. I want you to bring a, a pen. I want you to bring a, 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 a something that you can write on. And then I want you to not just be hearers, but doers of the word of God. And when you do that, uh -huh. If you don't already do that under the great preaching of your pastor, if you do that, you will find that this week will not just be a exercise of something that you have done. Now, I got up early this morning, took a flight from Oakland. I was there in, 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 in a big uh, homecoming that I had to preach at and, and uh, 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 a, a, a church dedication that they had. And, and I got up early at three o'clock in the morning. I said three o'clock in the morning to catch a flight at six o'clock in the morning to be here for you tonight. So I don't want anybody to talk about they tired. Come on and say them out there. And if you're tired, wake up, uh huh? Because the Lord has a word from somebody shout out. Say, say somebody, just turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Uh, the preacher has a word from the Lord. Uh, so it's time to wake up, uh huh? And get serious about prayer. Now watch this. Let's, let's go to uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we're looking at seventh verse. It's going to be on your screen because we're going to get serious about prayer, and I'm going to give you seven different practical principles, and you want to write them down, and then you want to begin. And that's Matthew, and it says, ask, and it shall, somebody shout out, shall, uh, be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. I love the positivity of this scripture. Verse 8, it says this. It says, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall, somebody shout out, shall, uh, shall be opened. Then verse 9 it says, Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Verse 10 it says, Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11 says this, if ye, watch this, then being evil, uh, you don't like being called evil, but you're evil, and I'm evil too. Without the Lord, all of us are evil. Come on and say amen out there. That's inherent in us. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? him I, I tell you you have not because you ask not here's our first key if in fact you want to get serious about prayer tonight here it is here's our principle when we pray listen we need to learn how to gaze upon God and just glance at your problems. Ah, oh, y'all didn't get it yet. See, I'm a teacher. Now, now if in fact uh, you agree with what I'm saying, or if in fact you, uh, you, you just want to affirm what I'm saying, let me tell you, this week, uh, it's going to prolong the nights if in fact you get quiet on me. Uh huh. Now, now, preaching is, watch this, it is not monological, it is dialogical. So if in fact I am saying something from the word of God under the unction of the word of God and you agree, you want to say amen. Uh -huh. 
Now, if you, if you don't say amen to, to a concept or something, what, what happens, because I'm a professor, what happens is it, it says, oh, they don't quite get it, and it extends the sermon about 10 minutes. Come on and say amen out there. Because I'm going to work with it till you get it. Come on and say amen out there. So if, in fact, you get it the first time, somebody ought to say amen. 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 Now, when you pray, here's principle number one. You, you need to learn how to gaze upon God and just glance at your problems. Now, there's a difference between a gaze and a glance. Now, you don't know the difference? Now, now, now uh, um, when I uh, saw your illustrious and dynamic pastor uh, tonight, we, he picked me up from the airport and and uh, he made sure I, I, I ate, made sure I was in my place of abode. He had everything taken care of, just take care of business. I praise God for the professionalism and the exquisite nature of how he is just taking care of his guests and his friend. And I, I just thank God and honored by that. Uh, but, but he was in uh, 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 good clothes, but casual clothes. But when I saw him tonight, I walked in, he was, in, he was suited and booted. Come on and say amen out there. He, he was sharp. And so, so I looked at him. He had his black suit. And I look at him now. He has a purple tie on. He has a shoe shine. In other words, I, 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 I glanced at him. Uh -huh. It took me all about seven seconds to know that he's put together because of the fact that he was sharp. From head to toe, he, was making, he made sure that we was sharp. But, but you will never see me gazing at another man. Somebody ought to say amen out there. Somebody ought to say amen. Okay, but I'm going to glance at, at another brother and I say, oh man, he's sharp. And, and I'm man enough to say another man is sharp. Come on and say amen out there. You know, there's there, there, there no shame in my game. Uh-huh. I'm man enough to, to, to so, so I looked at him, seven seconds, I said, man, he's well put together. He's well put together. He's sharp. Now, now. Uh, uh, my wife, who I left on uh, last Thursday to go to my appointment up in Oakland from Southern California, my wife, uh, because I did not want to leave her that morning, uh, uh, I, 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 when she got up, I got up, and I was just walking around like a sick puppy. Because I knew that I was going to be separated from her for 10 days. And, 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 and I looked around, she said, what you looking at? I said, you know exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, uh -huh. and, and I looked her up and I looked her down. I looked her all around. In other words, I fixed my attention on her and I was gazing on my... Oh, somebody ought to say amen out there. Because there is a difference, somebody shout out, difference between a gaze and a glance. See, I, I glanced at your pastor, but I gazed at my wife. Uh-huh. I, I, I looked her up and down and all around because of the fact that that's who God gave me. And I could fix my eyes and my attention on my lovely wife. Yes, yes, she's fine and just my kind. Come on and say amen out there. See, see, when you pray, get this. You need to learn and I need to learn. And it's good to see my friend and treasurer here and, and secretary and all, and all of what you is. Come on and say amen. And you do such a fine and, and fantastic job. Uh, um, when, when, when you pray, we need to learn how to gaze upon God. Are you getting this thing? And just glance at your problems. Why, why do I say that? Uh, God gave me this because I recognize, Pastor uh, St. Rose, that, that God is bigger than any problem that we have. Oh, y'all, come on and say it. See, that's why the Bible says, magnify the Lord with me. See, make God bigger than any problem that we have. We got to magnify the Lord. See, God is bigger than any problem that we have. Now, now, oftentimes we forget that. We forget that we serve a, a mighty God. Oh, we sing about it, how great is our God. But we got to understand that God is bigger than any problem that we have. We serve, I say, a mighty God. See, see, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. 
and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Uh, 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 now, 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 just wait. Wait to the end. We could get with it. We could get with it. Don't, don't bump me just yet. All right. You're going to make me work too hard. I'm too old for that. Come on and say amen out there. All right. But we're going to get there. All right. When I lean over to you, it's time for us to come on up. All right. All right. Praise God. See, what we do oft times, watch this, is we, we come before God uh, with all of our problem. Then we come before God with, before, with all of our trouble. Then we come before God with all of our, our needs. We come before God with all of our mess. Come on and say amen out there. And we pile up all of that stuff before God so high that we can no longer see God. That's why we should listen to that, uh, the words of that old song that we used to sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look, look full in his one. And then the things of this will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. See, you got to understand this concept that we need to gaze upon God and glance at your problems because watch this because God's power is much greater than your problems and his grace is much more sufficient than our needs so so when you come before God in prayer watch this we got to recognize who God is see see he's a God who could create out of nothing He's the God, watch this, I'm talking about he's the God who's put the stripes on the tiger's back. He's the God who, who put the stars in their silvery sockets in glory. He's the God who carpeted the earth with grass. He's the God who put the moo in the cow and the cluck in the chicken and the meow in the cat and the bark in the dog. He's a God who can exist in yesterday while he occupies today while he's penetrating tomorrow all at the same time. He's a God who can make a way out of no way, uh, something out of nothing. Uh, I told you we serve a mighty God. So when we get serious about praying, uh, we need to bow our knees uh, and recognize you're not talking to your homeboy. You're not talking to your homegirl. You're not talking to your road dog or your cut buddy. You're talking not to Oprah or Bill Gates. You're talking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Somebody ought to say amen. So you need to learn how to, to gaze upon God and just glance at your problems. See, we got to recognize that God really does know how to fix our stuff. He knows how to turn it around. He knows how to rearrange what we're going through. See, see, we, we need to learn how to recognize. Uh, 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 say, say, Lord, uh, because you are God, um, here's my issue. Here's my problem. Um, and, and, and Lord, uh, in your perspective, in your time, in your wisdom, do as you choose. And then we got to get to this point. Any way you bless me. I said any way you bless me. See, a whole lot of times, here we go, we, we, tell, we, we give the problem of God and then tell him how to work it out. He's God. You're not God. Any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. So number one, we got seven of them. Uh, 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 we need to learn how to gaze upon God. We've had to say gaze upon God. Huh? Glance at my problems. Huh? Now say it like you mean it. Say gaze upon God. Huh? Glance at your problem. See, 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 that's, that, that, that's the number one key. Okay, now, now, did that help somebody? Did that help somebody? All right, you need to focus on who God is. Number two, now. The second key is uh, prayer, mm, here's the principle, should always be your first response 
and not your last resort. Mm -hmm. I said prayer should always be your first response and not your last resort. Now, now most of us, um, if we're honest, most of us, we try everything else because we may have gotten a high school degree, a college degree, we, we think we have experience now, we think that uh, we really don't, you know, we could work it out ourselves, but most of us, um, even in the church, we, we try everything else. Well, I've tried this, uh, I've tried that, I've, I've tried psychotherapy, I, I've tried, uh, 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 I, I guess I'll go on and try God now. Save yourself all the pain and all the trials and all the heartache uh, and try God first. Come on and say amen out there. See, see, the reason why Jesus did not sin, the reason why he, he stayed connected with his father, the reason why he did not go left, everything that he did on this earth is because he sought counsel from his father. And that's why that hymn, and I love hymns, I love, I love praise songs, I love, uh, I love from sonatas to shout, I love it all. And I love that, that brother could sing tonight. Come on and say, oh, brother Denton can sing, you know, I love it all. But, but, but there's something about the depths of, of the words of old hymns. You know that hymn that says, oh, what needless pains we bear. Needless pain. Anybody else but me have suffered some needless pain? All because we do not carry, not just some things, everything to God. What in? See, we need to get serious about prayer because every decision in life, we need to lay them at the foot of the master. You know, little Teenage things they say down south. Little, little things that you think are little. We need to seek advice from the Father. You need to buy a car. Ask God. God, what car represents you best? You need to buy a house. Seek God. You need to, 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 to go to another job situation. Seek God. And you know what? The God that we serve, he's honored and he's never too busy to handle our issues. So, so, so the second key, and I'm very serious about this, not only do we need to learn how to gaze upon God and glance at our problems, but we need to make sure that we prioritize prayer because, because it ought to always be our first response and not something that we do because nothing else works, our last resort. But number three, watch this. It's going to make sense. Pray, listen, out of conviction, not from crisis. Why do I say that? Because most of us call upon God just like we would call upon a police officer or a firefighter or a, a EMT, an ambulance driver, or even our doctors. We, we, we usually do not connect with them unless we're related to them or we're, 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 we're married to one, but most of us don't call on our, our medical doctors until we, we have an ailment or because we're sick or we need some medication or we need our prescriptions for, uh, uh, refilled. And see, in other words, we, we don't call on those professional people most of the times until something is wrong or the, the, the need is great and we need to call upon them. And, and if I, on the, the first night of this fall revival, if I gave people, and we're going to prioritize, the pastor's already told me, we're going to prioritize prayer this week. Because this is not going to be about any man. It's not going to be about any woman. It's going to be about calling upon God and seeking God's face for a revival. Because I don't know about you, but I believe I and everybody else needed a revival tonight. Come on and say it again. See, if I gave people right now an opportunity to give prayer requests, mm -hmm, 99, I would suppose, 99.9% .9 of our prayer requests would be 
for a crisis type of situation. Uh, uh, Pastor Beeler, uh, uh, please pray for my daughter. She's getting ready to have surgery. That's good. Uh, pray for my son. He, he done left the church and he's out there hooked on drugs. You know, that, that's good. And you want to make sure that you, you lay those issues and problems at the foot of the Lord. Uh, uh, pre please pray for my job situation. Uh, you know, uh, this thing is rough out here. I really need a job. Uh, uh, pray for my home. I'm getting ready to lose it. Pray for my husband. He's cutting up again. See, most of our prayers are because out uh, of crises, uh, situations. Mm -hmm. now, 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 I want you to get this. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody here but me that have people in our lives? You, you might not want to call them friends. Maybe they are acquaintances, but people in your life, I know I have them in my life. Who, who, who really don't speak to you until they want something? And anybody but me have people in their lives that, 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 that you know when they finally do call you or text you, they, they, they have their hand out? Come on and say amen out there. And, and, and you know, they have that fake, you know, they have that fake thing going on. Ah! How you doing? They, they, they have not spoken to you for months or maybe weeks. Uh, hey, how you doing? And, and you, in your mind, they say, uh-oh, here they go. I wonder what they want. <laughs> hey, girl, I was just talking to you. you know, I'm just thinking about you. <laughs> and you say, okay, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, oh, I was just wondering if I could ask you. Now, now, how does, how does that make you feel? Here's a person that cannot speak to you until they have their hand out. Now, 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 just think about, because the one we claim to be our best friend is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We sing hymns like, how great thou art. We yeah. sing praise songs like, how great is our God. Yeah. We sing songs like, what a mighty God we yeah. serve. And yet, watch this. Some of us do not talk to him mm, mm, mm. until we have our hand out. See, sometimes we need to just speak to God not for what we need or what he's done, but for who he is. Somebody ought to say amen out there. Sometimes we need to come before his presence just to praise him because he's God all by himself. See, see, sometimes we just need to, 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 to go before him and not ask for anything. Just, just say, God, you're worthy to be praised. See, most of our prayers is because we want a handout from God. Give me this and give me that. I wonder how God, who has feelings, must feel that we cannot speak to him until we need something. But as children of God, we need to pray because we need to be convicted that it is good to pray. Men shall always pray and not faint. We need to pray because God says it's good. We need to pray in good times and bad times. We need to pray, watch this, in these last days, we need to pray before our crisis comes. So parents, mm -hmm, you need to pray now for your children that they come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Huh? I, I, I have uh, three daughters, and, and they're, they're all good daughters, you know. No, nobody's perfect, but I want you to understand that when they were young, I, I used to pray, pray for their future husbands when they were little. Come on and say amen out there. And I did that because once they get married, I want them gone for good. Come on and say amen out there. <laughs> And hey, don't come on back to the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my girls. Now, now, crisis will come. 
Into each life some rain must fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be some drama in all of our lives. Yes, the devil will make sure that crisis will come. But what I am saying, if you have a systematic prayer life, uh, your crisis will decrease because your prayer conviction has increased. Because when you get to know God for yourself, when you get to get thick with God, he will begin to show you the way step by step by step by step. Pray for conviction and not only from Christ. Says somebody ought to say amen out there. Number four. Number four. I want you to learn, if you want to get serious about prayer, and I know I do, I, I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. Uh-oh. Yeah, you're going to need to learn how to pray in the spirit. Uh-oh, what this bald-head California preacher talking about praying in the spirit. I will say it again without apology. If you want to get serious about prayer in these last days, we're going to have to pray in the spirit. Or with the spirit. Or with the aid of the spirit. Uh, uh, le, le, if if uh, uh, the person who's running the media or, or the, the graphics, uh, 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 Romans 8th chapter, Romans the 8th chapter, and we're going to look at two verses because it looked confused and you just added two more, you, uh, 10 more minutes to the sermon. All right, all right, good. Because you guys look dizzy and dazed when I say pray in the spirit. Oh, uh, what, what, what us going to do? What him saying? Come on and saying that. Well, I'm going to say it and, and God is going to convict us to night in the name of Jesus all right pray in the spirit uh, 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 Romans 8 26 and 27 if, 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 if the person can just work that out all right here it is it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities likewise the spirit also helpeth our for we know not what we should pray for as we are did you get that yeah some of you think well I know what to pray for no you don't know what to pray for. The Bible says, just in case you want to get mad at me, the Bible says, for we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit. Somebody shout out, but the Spirit. Uh, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27 says, it says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We got to pray in the spirit. Why? Because in the flesh, we don't know God's will for our lives. In the flesh, we don't know what's best for us. Uh, in the flesh, we don't know the future. But when we connect in the spirit, God's going to lead us what we need. Somebody ought to say amen out there. Now, now, most of us don't know that there is a science when it comes down to praying. Uh, did you know that, uh, matter of fact, every time you pray and every time I pray, that there is a connection that is going on with all the entities of heaven. See, some of us think that uh, God is impressed with our language and our diction. Some of y'all from down south or from some island or from some other country, and you think that, uh, uh, you think that God is impressed because you know how to put a noun and a verb together. And, 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 and some of us from deep south, uh-huh, some of us from deep parts of South and we get up front and we try to impress God. Oh, Lord, our God, ruler of heaven and earth, oh, omniscient, omnipresent. Uh, God is saying, what? That stuff don't even move beyond the rooftop. All that pretentious mess. See, when I want to get a prayer through, uh, I, I, I go to one of those old ladies 
who are thick with the Almighty. She may not have uh, years of education, but she has years uh, of dedication. She got she 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 got a BA uh, that says she been born again. Uh, she may not have a. Uh, 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 MS that she's a missing saint but she has an MA that she has the, the master's assistance come on and say amen to them she may not have an EDD that she's been everlasting damn with the devil but she has a PhD that says that she praises God him daily somebody ought to say amen to them I don't go to those people who, who try to impress God with their language you need an old saint that, that knows him for herself or himself. Somebody ought to say him out there. But I told you that there is a science in prayer. Did you know every time that you pray, listen, listen, listen. Every time that you pray, you pray in your language, whether it's English, whether it's uh, Dutch, whether it's French, whether it's Spanish, whether it's uh, Ebonics, Patois. Come on and say him out there. You pray with a sincere heart, and what happens is that the Holy Ghost yes. takes your prayer, yes. takes your cry, yes. takes what's on your heart, and watch this, and transforms that prayer into the language of heaven. That's why I say you got to pray in the Spirit or with the aid of the Spirit, because it is the Spirit that translates your request into the language of heaven. Somebody ought to say amen out there. That's why, that, that, that's why don't try to impress God with your language. Make sure that you have a sincere and pure heart and that you are praying in the will of God. And so God sees that and the Holy Spirit, he takes your request and he translates that request into the language of heaven. And you know what the Spirit is saying? The Spirit says, uh, you know, what, what they're really trying to say, God, is this. Yeah. He, he, see, see, here, we're trying to, we're trying to you know, uh, 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 say what we, we want and, and say what we need. And, and because the Spirit is in tune with our needs, when we're praying with the Spirit, what the Spirit is really saying, he said, uh, God, God what, what they're trying to say is this. He, he, makes, this, he makes intercession for us. You, you, you know, they're, they're really not saying it right, but what they really is saying is this. Yes. This is what they really need, you know. I'm so glad for the Spirit of God. Come on and say amen out there. So, so it says the Spirit makes intercession. I said the Spirit makes intercession. So, so when we pray with a sincere heart, you've got to get this. It is the Spirit that takes our prayers and then interprets our prayer, translates our prayer into the language of heaven. Now watch this. The spirit translates it and then presents the prayer before God the Father. Because we found out in Matthew 7 that the Father is willing to give good gifts to his children. So the Holy Ghost, uh-huh, he translates our prayer, presents it before the Father who's willing to give good gifts to his children. Are y'all getting this thing? And the father who's willing to give good gifts to his children because now it is rooted in his will and it has been translated by the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost. The father says, all right, I'm going to grant that request because it is locked in my will. But by what right and in whose name should I grant this request? That's when Jesus, the son says, my grace is sufficient. That's why you should never, ever end a prayer without saying, in the name of Jesus. See, see, you're not getting this thing. See, if you don't say in the name of Jesus, it's not going to go anywhere. Why? Because here it is. Here it is. See, if I write a letter and the letter is written, I put the letter in the envelope. And I seal up the letter in the envelope, but it is not going to make its destination without a stamp. And the stamp in this prayer thing is in the name of Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Ghost translates our prayer. Watch this. 
God is the giver of every gift. He's the answer of our prayer. But Jesus is the enabler of our prayers when we say in the name of Jesus. And, and, and so watch this. The Godhead worked together in the answering of our prayers. And then Jesus turns over to the angels and the angels are the ones uh, who excel in strength and they are messengers for God and the angels are the ones that answer our prayers by coming down and give whatever aid that we need at that moment. And so the Holy Ghost and the Son and the Father and the angels work all together just to make things happen for us children of the... Somebody ought to say amen out here. I said there is a science in prayer. I said, there is a science in prayer. I said, there is a science in prayer. But it gets deeper than that. Have you ever been at the point in your life, I know I have, that, that you've been so swamped down, you have been so discouraged, you have been so despondent that you could not say a word. You have been been so down and so out and so battered and so bruised and, and you feel so abused by life and sometimes even by the church have you ever been so down and you could not say a word but you could just moan and you could just groan and you could just just lift up your hand did you know the holy ghost is so powerful uh, that he will interpret your moan and your groan and present your moan and your groan and translate that before the Father. Have you been so down and out when you could not say a word? It is the Holy Ghost that interprets your moan and your groan. Somebody ought to say amen out there. But it gets deeper than that. Have you ever been so down and out that you couldn't even get out a moan and a groan and you could just squeeze out a tear? Did you know that the Holy Ghost can, can bottle up our tears and take our tears when we could not say a word and take our tears and interpret our tears and, and present our tears before the Father? That's why we need to learn how to pray in the spirit. Uh -huh. Somebody ought to say amen out there. God is not impressed with your language. But the spirit can, can, can read our moans and our cries and our tears when we can't say a word. And he understands what we're going through. And he interprets. That's why, that's why black folks and people of color, we have traditionally uh, always have prayed in the spirit. That's why we sing songs like, I love the Lord. Watch this. He heard my cry. Listen to it. And, and pitied every. See, y'all didn't get that theology. And pitied every. Long as I live. And troubled rise. I'm gonna hasten. See y'all, y'all gotta get this theology in our songs. I'm gonna hasten to that throne. We gotta pray in the spirit. Why? Because we don't know what to pray for. We say, well, uh, I'm educated now. I, I I want this woman because she's fine, and I I I I I know she's for me. I want this man because he's tall and tan and terrific. But, but the spirit knows when, when, when he says, uh, no, nah, they ain't for you. Don't touch him. Don't touch her. See, so you know what the spirit, when you pray in the spirit, when you pray in the spirit, he's trying to save you years of pain. I wish somebody would get real with me tonight. Somebody knows what I'm talking about tonight. See, see, we, we look at things from the outside, from the aesthetics. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 she's fine. He's, he's handsome. Oh, he got a nice voice. But we got to pray in the spirit and we got to learn that father knows best. 
Don't trust your feelings. Trust the spirit. Can the church say? Number five. When you pray. You, we need to learn how to come. Here's the principle. Come before his presence with praise. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that comes, watch this, with the fact <clears throat> that we have to get to the level of maturity in our Christian faith yes. to praise him, here it is, before for the blessing comes. See, most of us, we, we, we like to, you know, show out in, in prayer meetings, the few of us that come. Come on and say amen out there. And, and some of us are sincere. Some of us, we like to show out. And, and it's not a bad thing to, to give our testimony when God does come through. But we act as if God is not God until he says yes. See, God is good if he says yes uh -huh. and if he says no. Yes. See, it is our warped mentality in our spoiled brat status in the kingdom that makes us feel that God has not answered until he says yes. I've been, been praying for years and God has definitively said no. But, but, but we're so arrogant and we're so out of tune that we're going to keep on praying and God has said no. God knows how to say yes. He knows how to say no. He knows how to say maybe. He knows how to say wait. He knows how to say grow up first because you cannot handle it. Uh huh. See, and, and then when God says no, here we go. We stop our amens. We move to the back of the church. We stop reading the Sabbath school lesson. We fold up our arms. We, we poke out our lips and say, after all I've done, why me? Why not you? You're the one that says you want to grow. You're the one that says you want to get prepared to meet Jesus. You're the one who says that you want to move on up a little higher in spirituality. God knows how to make us and break us and take us and grow us up. Somebody ought to say amen out there. See, we need to learn how to praise God even before the blessing comes. Mm -hmm. And then the nerve, some of us, we, we, we got attitude and, and, and jealous. And sometimes we miss out on our own blessings by focusing upon what other people have. Mm -hmm. So we need to praise God before and after because he's good when he says yes and he's good when he says no and then let me just throw this in for free we, we need to learn how to uh, put plurality in our prayer yes. see all of us we're all self-focused on everything oh lord just pray for allegheny west pray for central Pray for my pastor. Pray for my job. Pray for my family. Pray for my children. No, 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 no. Don't you know other conferences need God's blessing too? Don't you need, don't you know other churches right in this city need God's blessing too? Don't you need so, some other families and marriages need? See, quit being so selfish in your praying and put plurality in your praying. Oh, y'all don't like that one, huh? Might be the last time you invite me, but I'm going to say everything that I need to say because it's the truth anyhow. Somebody shout out amen. amen. Number six. Uh, just practical. Stop praying, listen to me, wholesale and start praying retail. See, I, I'm, I'm trying to get all of us to another level in our prayer existence Stop praying wholesale and start praying retail. What am I talking about? Well, um, basically, be specific in your prayer. Now, all of us have uh, prayed those wholesale prayers before. Let me give you some. Lord, thank you for everybody. First of all, you don't know everybody. No, 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 no. Everybody, thank, thank you, everybody. No, 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 no. Uh, here's another one. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. No, first of all, you don't do all sins. You lie. You gossip. 
you're a busybody. Come on, talk to me here, somebody here. All my sins, like you do all sins. You don't do all sins, you lie. Like my boys from Jamaica, you liard. We need to be specific. Pray retail. Uh -huh. Be specific. Lord, as you're, as you're coming and blessing Allegheny East and 